Yeah, it was, uh, I was working narcotics at the time, and my partner and I had a rented Toyota Camry. And we're in Hollywood, and this has happened in North Hollywood. I mean, you know, the help call comes over the radio, right? And the whole world's going to go. So he's driving, I'm in the passenger seat. I jump in the back seat, and it was one of those where you could fold the seat down and you could get to the trunk. Oh, yeah. So, like, I'm pulling our gear out of the trunk, and I'm putting his vest on his head as he's trying to drive. <laughs> and I'm digging around, and I look out the back window, and there's a black and white sheriff's car chasing us down the freeway because we're doing, you yeah. know, all this thing will do. And I had my vest in my hand. Off my car mm -hmm. and parachute you under my driveway, you would, you would have no idea. I mean, you no idea. Can we do that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That'd be fun. Yeah, good times. Yeah, we can definitely do that. It yeah. sounds like a good time. Yeah. I've always wanted to go skydiving. It's on yeah. my bucket list. Yeah. Maddie wants to go skydiving. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I just want to do it once. Okay. Just once. Yeah. Just putting you and Maddie on the same small plane gives me, like, <laughs> well, it's, you, this you, should not. You, you know the story of In N Out, right? Like the family that owned In N Out? No. Mm -hmm. I don't know when it was, but it was several years ago, they were all like the family was going somewhere together and the plane crashed. Oh, okay. Leonard Skinner. Yeah. 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 And it killed like all these people Half that were the in and charge. Out clan. Yeah. So now they literally have a corporate policy that no more than like one or two executives can be on the same aircraft yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have that unofficial policy. He just doesn't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> we can't be on the same plane. Yeah. Like, we couldn't fly to Vegas together. Because, I mean, like, think about it, though. I mean, honestly, if something happened, yeah, that would entirely cripple. Yeah, the like, we're, we're small like, enough that, like, if we lose any one of, like, I mean, like, it's, it's, yeah. I well, mean, it's mod lights the same way. I mean, how many hats do you yeah. wear? How many hats do I yeah. wear? Or yeah. Maddie or Ian? Like, I mean, yeah. or even Justin. Like, Justin's wearing yeah. a lot of hats yeah. now. Like, there's a lot of, a lot of hats worn by, few people we might not have showed, drove up here together yeah who's got the keys no yeah <laughs> i'll uber back yeah, yeah. we're just right. gonna do everything remote now yeah, yeah. You can't leave your house <laughs> nobody's <laughs> everybody's in a like, huge fucking yeah. bubble sneaking out of the room and everything. <laughs> jr Sir. dude thank you for what for showing up for, for coming dude, on come on it's it just i i'm embarrassed that you guys are scraping the bottom of the barrel for content <laughs> absolutely that, like not. like it's like the barrel has been turned over and like I'm stuck to the bottom of it, like underneath it. Like fuck, there's something stuck on the fucking bottom of this thing. What does that mean? And there's like, ooh, I stepped in shit. Well, actually, now since we turned it over, it's the top of the barrel. Oh, that's true. Perspective. Yeah, there you go. So we're here at TTPOA, and this is our first. Chris, what does TTPOA stand for? Texas Tactical Police Officers Association. Well done. He did that. Well done. Without a cue card. SWAT conference. Yes. Right. SWAT conference. And I'm probably yeah. turning red because it's a little warm. Is anybody else a little warm? Well, uh, you, you got the heat majigger oh, behind you. We're in formal wear. Too. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't want to look as fat as I am in this T-shirt. I it's see. kind of I shapes. See. It's you know, still it's right. Right. <laughs> slimming. Um, cover garment. <laughs> but welcome to the Big Tex Ordinance Podcast. Tonight, we are sitting down with JR from, or formerly, can we, 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 we speak about what you've done in the okay. past so formally of lapd swat yes correct yes uh you're a marine yes there's a whole bunch of stuff that i don't know about you that hopefully you'll share with us and currently you work for staccato and mod light because oh. free time is overrated right. <laughs> and Enjoy that you retirement. are the, the you forgot the coolest thing you are a cat rescuer yes Yes. I and am. California Mountain Cowboy. Yes. <laughs> Talk about hats. As depicted on, <laughs> as depicted on the Big Tex Ordinance. Uh, <laughs> yes. If you have a Big Tex Ordinance Wolverines shirt, that <laughs> is actually, actually JR's <laughs> likeness on the shirt holding up a rifle. Still haven't gotten any royalties. <laughs> we'll see you some t-shirts. Oh, I have like one for every day of the week. <laughs> I think, I think Ian sent of, me like seven. So. I need uh, one of your stickers, sir. Or patches. I think I actually have some here. Yeah, because those are beautiful. Yeah, that was uh, 
that was that was done as a joke, obviously. That's great. And uh, the the feedback that I got from it, I was like, this was ma- they're making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> this is not. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. patch is it? So there's a photograph of me like demonstrating a tactical reload on a range, and I'm wearing my hat. You know. This, that, that it's a cowboy hat. Right. Yeah. So a couple of guys at Staccato are famous for making like these parody, like y- y'all's decals, right? Yeah. yeah. So they put me in like the Joe Exotic striped shirt, you know, and they put JR's exotic, oh, yeah. JR yeah. Exotics got it. on it. Got yeah. it. Seen it. Yeah. So there were some, some stickers and then Nancy Stevens at Tough Products saw it. And next Great thing you know, name. it becomes a patch. Yeah. That's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. She's awesome. I talked about her last time I saw her about getting some of my angel sticker yeah. patches. Well, we actually need, I need, to, make I need that. to do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Have it, have it, have it designed, and we'll yeah, we'll talk to make him pay for it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it'll work. So, so let's get into it, man. Okay, let's start wherever you want to start. I was born a poor black child. Okay. No, wait, that's Steve Martin. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Just a dude playing another dude. Just a dude playing another dude. Um, yeah, this is, first of all, this is hard. Okay. This is this is hard to do because it uh, it's just hard to like toot your own horn or whatever. Because I just I'm just a dude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I joined the Marine Corps in 1980s. Well, let me rewind because I'll, I'll I'll do some self deprecation. But uh, <clears throat> when I graduated from high school, I had a four year full ride academic ROTC scholarship oh. uh, to go in the Air Force. Um, when they give you your scholarship they pick your degree so they picked electrical engineering for me it ain't happening (laughs) there's math and all kinds of stuff involved so i did a full year and i was like yeah this is this is gonna i'm gonna burn in here this is not gonna go well so uh dropped out of school broke my dad's heart uh joined the marine corps in 1987 um did six years on active duty spent uh six months in somalia during just prior to the whole black hawk down thing um, that was fun. And then uh, got out in 1994. I'm sorry, 1993. And uh, if you know this, like when you when you EAS, when you end your service, um, the military will either give you an airplane ticket back to your home, like where you're from. And for me, it was Louisiana. Or they will give you the cost in cash of that airplane ticket. So I left the Marine Corps with $350 in crisp $20 bills. Uh, and that was all the money I had in my name. And uh, I had uh, I was living up in North Hollywood, just north of Camp Pendleton, and was out walking around one day, the day before Thanksgiving, I believe, in 93, and uh, saw a big banner, LAPD is hiring, take the test here kind of a thing. I'm like, all right, go on, give this a try. And... Uh, Amazingly enough, I passed the test and uh, went on to do 27 years at LAPD. And uh, like you said, I did my third, or my last 13 years in SWAT. So it was, uh, it was, it was a humbling experience, uh, to say the least, to be able to accomplish something like that. Um, I was 40 when I started SWAT school. I was one of three guys in the history of the platoon at that time that was over the age of 40 to actually make it through SWAT school. So it was a 14-week selection process. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. So it's about a 50% wash washout rate, you know. So uh, started with 16, ended up with eight of us. And uh, just after that, it was uh, just doing SWAT shit for my last 13 years. What you know, were you doing so. before SWAT? So <sighs> kind of funny. Um, I had actually worked patrol. I worked a gang unit. I'd worked what we call a special problems unit. Um, and then I was chasing a gangster through a housing project one night and, um, I reached out with my left hand, grabbed him by the, by the shirt and he made a hard left and my, uh, my head made a hard right. So I actually blew out the disc oh. between C5 and C6, um, had to have a spinal fusion and everything, you know, because of that. And then, uh, I was a detective at the time. And then I was like, you know, what am I going to do with my career, right? Like, I'm done. And I uh, healed up from that and then got a job as an armorer for the SWAT team, okay. working on their guns and stuff, right? Nice. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is where I'm going to spend the rest of my career, man. I'm banging on guns and stuff, having a great time. And then I did that for a year. And a couple of the supervisors came to me and they said, hey, you know, you really need to try out. Uh, and I'm like, well, uh, 
okay. So I went from literally, because I'd been off for almost a year, not being able to run the three mile PFT course. Uh, in the course of nine weeks, I got, got my time down to like 19 and a half minutes. And that was getting up at, you know, 4 a.m. and running before work and, you know, just hustling. It, I, I had to, you know, I had to try. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what I was doing before that. And then once I got into SWAT, it was just like, all right, well, I'll stay here for a while. So that turned into 13 years. <laughs> Isn't LAPD SWAT like one of the original SWAT team? The original. It's the original. Yeah, the original. So the term. Uh, was actually coined by Daryl Gates, who was a commissioner at the time, or I'm sorry, an inspector at the time. Um, and he wanted to be called special weapons attack teams. And right. he went to the chief and like, here, I want to develop this, this, uh, this concept. And it was in, uh, after the Watts riots in 1965 and a couple other events was the reason they wanted to stand this team up. And they were originally called uh, station defense teams. So you'd have guys who would literally bring their own guns from home. I mean, you guys like throwing M1 Garands in their trunk and stuff. And uh, their job was if there was ever another riot situation, they would go up on the roof of the station or whatever, and they would defend the stations. And then that slowly evolved into, okay, we're going we're gonna to develop like a tactical team. And so we had two events <clears throat> that were like the, the culmination or the start of SWAT. And it was the... Uh, the Black Panther shootout, and then the shootout with the SLA, the Symbionese Liberation Army, the guys that uh, kidnapped Petty Hurst. So if you ever see our patch, our logo, it has a 41 and a 54 on it. Well, one shootout was at uh, 41st in Compton, and the other one was at 54th in Central, or maybe the other way around, I can't remember. Um, so that's where that whole thing came from. Um, and then we, uh, that's, it just sort of evolved. And originally... It was decentralized. So, you know, Ian might work at 77th Patrol and, and Ike would work, you know, somewhere else and I would work somewhere else. And then we would all come together for training days. They used to, each station had a teletype. So that's the way they would send messages around the station was they would, you know, formulate this teletype. and Well, when they were going to have a training day, it would say, bring your lunch. And bring your lunch meant bring your own guns that, yeah. you know, that you have at home. That's, that's what it meant. That's cool. And these dudes were buying like, you know, out of their own pocket. They were buying like old army sateen utilities and they were dying on black and they were it's basically doing everything out of their own pockets. And it was really funny to talk to some of the old guys because they would say that, you know, they'd die these utilities and they'd go to like these training days, right? And they would come home. And they'd been out sweating and everything else. They'd take their shirt off and, like, their body was yeah. black from, <laughs> the, <laughs> from the dye, you know. And uh, now we've got robots. <laughs> so it's, yeah. you know, it's come a long way since 1967. So, yeah. And so if you joined LAPD in 93, that was right after the riots? So I was in Okinawa uh, for the riots. I watched them on AFN you know, yeah. in Okinawa. And then by the time I actually got hired, it was July of 94 was when I started. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it was after the riots. Okay. Yeah. And then North Hollywood shootout. 1997. So you were... I was there. You were there for that. Yeah. Or not there for that. But no, I was there okay. for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Everybody was there. there. <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody that was working that day probably ended up there. Yeah. That's pretty pretty wild. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was uh I was working narcotics at the time and my partner and I had a rented Toyota Camry. <laughs> and we're in Hollywood and this has happened in North Hollywood. I mean, you know, the help call comes over the radio, right? And the whole world's gonna go. So he's driving, I'm in the passenger seat. I jump in the back seat and it was one of those where you could fold the seat down and you could get to the trunk. Oh yeah. So like I'm pulling our gear out of the trunk and I'm putting his vest on his head as he's trying to drive <laughs> and I'm digging around and I look out the back window and there's a black and white sheriff's car chasing us down the freeway because we're doing, you yeah. know, all this thing will do. And I had my vest in my hand and I just held it up and I pointed to where it said police on the back and they turned their lights off. And they went <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, that was a crazy day. Yeah, that was a crazy day. 
Back then, you were still rolling. What what were you armed with? Back then? Uh, at the time, I th- we didn't have 45s yet, so I still had a Beretta. I had a Beretta and an M1 Super 90 Benelli was was my guns. Um, and then that's when uh, that was like the beginning of switching to 45s. Uh, getting patrol rifles, doing all that stuff because we were outgunned. I mean, yeah, because like, didn't y'all like go to like pawn shops and be like, all right, we need all the rifles. There was a there was a store called B and B Guns in North Hollywood, and a sergeant had the wherewithal to instead of coming to the scene, he went there. Mm. Yeah, and not a single round was fired from any of those those rifles because by the time he got, got there, yeah, it yeah. was all over with. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if that's something that he had pre-gamed. If something yeah. ever goes down, I'm going here. I'm yeah. going B and B rifles. Yeah. Probably a great idea. Like, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. yeah, like that's a solid plan. Yeah, somebody, if something ever goes down, come to text ordinance, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but come to the back door, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and let us know, yeah, Texas first, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> when I when we when I've talked to you in the past via text or at events and stuff, mm-hmm. like you've like you've mentioned like how long you were there, and I was like doing the math in my head, I was like. Man, JR has kind of been there for like the whole gamut of really modern, like modernization of SWAT teams and SWAT tactics. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we went from uh, literally having a, a mirror on a stick searching for guys uh, to robots and drones and, and all the other evolution that, you know, modern day policing is now. Um, gotten to especially with SWAT teams like you said I mean there were when I started um, we had big spotlights that we would you know set in front of us and you literally I'm not kidding you had an eight foot long pole that had a you know one foot square plastic mirror on it and we learned how to look into rooms without sticking your head in the door and do all this other kind of stuff Uh, and now it's just like sit out on the street and drive a robot in and find the guy yeah. You know, so shoot a bunch of gas through the window. Yeah, yeah. Time tactics and tear gas, man. It's uh, yeah. But he's got a mask on. It's the triple. That's T's. not going to work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's definitely evolved. Um, I think the the negative side of that is I think you can rely on technology too much, and it's like, what do we do when the battery dies? You know. So I, I think a lot of the the old school tactics of literally having to, you know, use your brain and, and crawl around on your belly and look for people. I think a lot of that, we're getting away from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but technology has definitely made it safer. It's made it yeah. a much safer job. Yeah. You're keeping guys at harm's way, you know, I mean, yeah. if it's not necessary, why do it? Yeah, exactly. I, I spent a, a decade in the fire service before moving to Texas, and it's like the same thing as like yep. with the thermal cameras and the, you know, the SCBAs and stuff like that. It's like technology has led us further into these things. But if, oh shit, I forgot to charge the thing or right. something fails, then it's a whole, yeah, whole other world. Yeah, in. it's like what do I do now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you don't have the skill sets, you have nothing to fall back on. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's one of the things that that we've always, uh, you know, had pride in is that we make sure that everybody has those basic skills so they do have something to fall back on, you know. So, What were some of your roles What you were on the team? Um, so we're a little different than, than most teams. Uh, everybody starts off as an assaulter. Um, we don't really use that term, but that's the term everybody, you know, you're just a SWAT cop. Um, so obviously started off that and then <clears> – <throat> I became a firearms instructor, so I was one of the primary firearms instructors for the team. Uh, I was a sniper and then uh, an explosive breacher, and then I was one of the original, uh, we called it the tech cadre, but it was like the guys that ran the robots and stuff like that, because contrary to popular opinion, not everybody can do that. Uh, It's, you know, there have been a lot of times where the robot ends up on its side, (laughs) and it's like because somebody ran it over a mattress and it flopped over. Um, so we had just certain guys and they're expensive. Yeah. I mean, we had one of our robots, I think was like, uh, $85,000 or something like that. And we're like, Hey, thumbs, you don't get to touch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to spread myself too thin, you know, uh, become that, you know, jack of all trades, master of none kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I tried to kind of keep it, keep it as narrow as I could. 
Um, cause there's a lot of, I mean, you know, my, the scars on my knuckles have healed from being a knuckle dragger, but there's a lot of, uh, really technical, difficult stuff that you have to learn how to do. Um, so, you know, explosive breaching, you've got to do, you know, damage prediction, you've got to be able to build charges, you've got to do all of this stuff. And then, you know, snipers, you guys obviously know weaponized math. Um, there's a lot to it, you know, um, but I had a great time, you know, I, the, the things that I chose to do, I tried to be as good at them as I possibly could. Um, and I just, like I said, I didn't want to spread myself so thin, you know, like I, I wasn't an EMT, you know, it's like, okay, the last guy you want putting a bandaid on you is probably me, <laughs> you know, it's like, know your limitations kind right. of thing, right? <laughs> it's like, I'm not going there. Um, my first Lieutenant when we were in the uh, in SWAT school, uh, everybody is a negotiator. We all go through the hostage negotiation oh, cool. course. It's like 40 hours. And he walks over to me, and he, I'm, I'm doing like a role play thing. He walks over, and he puts his hand on his chin. And he goes, if you make it, you will never be a negotiator. <laughs> Jared's like, yeah, pull the fucking trigger. I don't care. <laughs> I have no patience. It's like, James so, was like, I got a pizza in 10 minutes. Are we going to jump or not? Yeah, like, what yeah. are we doing? If you were really going to do this, it would already be done. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Quitter. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so in that role, is before we transition that, I got, I've got tons of questions. Oh, yeah, so, I, no, no. I, you I, got see, anything? No, go, go right ahead, man. I've, I, send it. You're good? I, right. You're asking a lot of the ones I want to. So, and it's, so, so many questions. In that role, when you were, when you were in SWAT, did you travel all over doing training, or is that something that you started doing after? So we get asked, you know, pretty frequently, hey, can you send some guys out to do – like there's guys here that are going to be doing a debrief. Yeah. Um, we would get asked from time to time, and so we would work in a five-man element. So there'd be uh, four officers, so two, two pairs, yourself and your partner, and then another pair, and then there'd be a team leader, an element leader. So generally speaking, if your element leader got asked to go do training, then he would take his guys with him. Okay. Um, so it, we did it. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't very frequently. Um, once or twice a year. But I actually started working about 15 years ago for Scotty Reitz, uh, old school SWAT guy. Uh, and I'd been teaching, you know, for him, but it was all like local stuff, you know, teaching rifle classes and shotgun classes and all that kind of stuff. But literally going to SWAT teams or around the country to teach, not not really too much. Um, our thing is you need to be here and do your job. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? We can't really spare a bunch of dudes to be traveling around the country all the time. So. And since you've been out, mm -hmm. though, I know you've you went to South Korea, right? Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. No, the... Uh, so my partner at the time, uh, work partner, not life partner, um, was the first Korean LAPD SWAT guy. Super cool dude, great friend of mine, probably one of my best friends in the whole wide world. Um, very deep connections in the military and law enforcement community in Korea. Um, when they had the Olympics, I think it was a 2016, they had the Olympics, in, the Winter Olympics in South Korea. They bought a bunch of Bearcats, <laughs> but they never got any training on them. So they were just basically armored buses for lack of a better term. They just drive them around. You know? So he actually got us a, a contract, if you will, to go over uh, and meet with the Korean national police SWAT teams. And we spent a week, you know, teaching them the intricacies of how to use them in tactical situations and, you know, the actual operation of them and what they can do and what they can't do. Um, ran a bunch of scenarios, um, you know, did some ballistic stuff, you know, work with them and things like that, that I don't really want to get into too much about the ballistic capabilities yeah. of their trucks and all that. But, uh, yeah, so that was, that was a great trip. Except for that 19 hour flight in a mask. Yeah. That oh was, yeah. Yeah. Geez. It was COVID. Yeah, it was right at the height of COVID, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. It was horrible. Oh, it was bad. Yeah. But I've been to, went to Chile several years ago to do some work with their special forces snipers, um, do some gear stuff with them and, made some lifelong friends. I mean, literally I'll just every so often I'll get a, a message from these two guys in Chile going, Hey, we need your advice on this. I'm like, bro, you could do a lot better than me. <laughs> it's like, come on. You're yeah. at the top of their barrel though. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> now that the barrel's flipped over. Yeah. 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 
So, but uh, that, that's probably, I, I would say, one of the the best parts of my career is the people I've met. I mean, look at you guys, right? It's like otherwise, I never would have met you guys. Um, and that's the friendships and the connections and just the, you know, people that you've met along the way. Um, and you form like these lifelong friendships with people just because you have a few things in common that you probably never would have met. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I dare say that uh, that's probably the best part of the whole thing. You know? So when you transitioned out, anybody got a SWAT team? Anybody got a SWAT question? Uh, one second, I do. We're good. Sorry. Justin's, Justin's, Justin's probably so, like when you're when you're there with a team like I mean you've been there for what tw- you say twenty seven years uh, on the job yeah, yeah. twenty seven years so, yeah. I mean it kind of becomes like a family uh, you know like your your second family a very for- dysfunctional <laughs> <laughs> you know it's uh, and I know that you guys have experienced it too especially like like guys in the military get that a lot like there are people that are like super super close friends and then there are people that you have nothing in common with other than work. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that that common thread is, I'll die for you if I have to. I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to come to your house for dinner, and you sure as ain't coming to mine. <laughs> but when you're at work, all that gets thrown aside, and it's like we may have differences or whatever, but we will all die for each other. Um, That's your weird fucked up family. It it, it is. <laughs> it's a very disjointed, dysfunctional family that you know, but the reality of it is, is that's literally what you'll do. And it's happened, you know, yeah. Yeah. It, it's happened on our team twice. Um, and then a third guy got killed in Afghanistan on active duty. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, you, you do form the connections, um, but some of them are just fractured, if you will, you know, <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, there's still dudes, you know, like, Oh, my my wife can't get over. She's like, you don't talk to some of your friends for years sometimes. Yeah. But if they call, I'm picking up the phone. Yeah. Or if I saw them walking down the street, yeah. you know, we'd automatically say, hi, what's up? What's going yeah. on? Hey. And then just go about our day. Yeah. But we've, we've still got that connection. Yeah. Right. It, it's, a, it's funny. Uh, my ex-wife and I were having a conversation and she couldn't understand it. She's like, what do you mean? And I go, watch this. And it's like one o'clock in the morning. Pick the phone up. Glenn, shovel, bag of sulfur, or bag of lime, and a roll of garbage bags. <laughs> and I just hang up the phone. And it's 7 o'clock the next morning. He's like, where are we going? What do you need? <laughs> where am I meeting you? Yeah. And she's like, I don't understand that. And it's like, well, never been a part of an organization, you know, like that, where people's lives literally depend on each other, you know. So. Uh, what was my question going to be? It was probably really good too. It, it probably, probably was. was. <laughs> you got this. Um, yeah. You only, so get, what, you only when, get one, so don't. I know. Don't, don't it's, <laughs> it's like a fart. Half the time. <laughs> uh, so when you, when you're on the team, so obviously it's LAPD. So right. huge department, huge city, full time team. I'm yep. guessing. So are you guys like patrolling the street, and then you get a call out, <clears> and you're like, okay, see you later? Or are you guys like training all day long, strictly you know not kicking doors all day long? I know so, it probably changes. As- and it, it does. So um, the easy answer is uh, we would work in a four-week cycle. Okay. So if you look at the calendar, all the months aren't equal numbers of days. Mm-hmm. So we would work in this four-week cycle. And there's 13 of these four-week cycles in a calendar year, every single year. So the first week of that cycle, we were all together as a team. We were doing our shooting. We were doing our, our platoon movement, hostage rescue, whatever that week entailed. And then the rest of the week, or the rest of the weeks, we call like our cadre days. So there were uh, two sniper days from the ground, two sniper days from the air. We have uh, two breacher days. The negotiators have their training going on. So everybody's kind of fractured, and they're training in those those different disciplines. Okay. Um, and then the platoon was in numbered squads. Okay. So 20s, 30s, 40s, all the way to 70s. And then what we would do is we would alternate uh, standby responsibilities. So the first week is odds, second week is evens, and so on and so forth. So if there was a call-up during the day, we called it sides, the other side would handle it. Okay. So if it was an odd night, the evens would handle it during the day. And then they just would forth. keep flipping. Um, but the majority of the time, if something happened during the workday, 
everybody go, you know, because there was usually just kind of barely enough people working on any given day because you would take all your days off on the other side because you didn't want to miss standby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was usually, you know, between vacations and guys that are hurt and all that, there's enough dudes working to handle a call up during the day. So you, you probably went. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And is it, I mean, do you have one big team or is it like, Hey, you're team a team B. No, it, it's one sixty officer team. Okay. And there's That's nine a, supervisors. A there's just dudes. one team. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, uh, between, like I said, guys that are on vacation, guys that are hurt, yeah. guys that are off just cause it's a regular day off. You might have 30 guys working. Okay. Um, and historically, we've always carried vacancies just because the, the selection process takes so long. What was it, like 14 weeks? Well, or, well that's, just the, the, that's just the school. Yeah. So by the time you have your, your first, you know, your PFT originally, and then you have oral boards and you get a list selected, it's, it's a four- or five-month process, you know, to, to pick new guys. And it's very labor-intensive because – the the people that are training, you know, these selectees, that takes up a lot of manpower too, you know. So you've got a whole squad of guys, ten guys that are like running the shoot house, you know. And, and if on the range days you've got all the firearms instructors, you know, on the range with the selectees, so it's a very labor intensive process. And it just seems like what would happen is right about the time you get one group trained up three guys would retire. Yeah. So now you got three more openings, you know, so it's almost like you could literally have like a training squad for lack of a better term that could literally be doing a training class all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. So we, you know, we'd always have four or five, six openings, you know, so even though it sounds like it's a really big team, it, it's really, yeah, everyone's yeah. doing a lot. Of yeah. Things. You need that many people just yeah. to be able yeah. to do something, you know, on any given day. So, so, like, if there's, like, a big incident, like the Nakatomi uh, Plaza incident. Yes. From yeah, I was there for that one, too. Oh, I don't, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if there's something like that, does everyone kind of deploy to that? Or do you have like, – is it – So, we would call it, like, an all-hands call-up. Mm -hmm. um, normally, what would happen is uh, we call him the incident commander, who's usually, like, the first senior officer on the scene. He would call – us and say, hey, okay, here's what I got. And our supervision would make a determination, hey, who goes, who doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, our kind of our standing rule was if it was a hostage rescue, it was supposed to be all hands. Yeah. It didn't always happen that way. Um, you don't need 60 guys to do a hostage rescue, but if you need 60, you better have 60. Yeah. yeah you don't want to send 25 when you need 60. Yeah. Um, and the reality of it is, like Ian step, or pointed out, it's such a spread out city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I might not be on standby, but it's happening a mile from my house. So you probably want me to jump in my car and go. Yeah, especially uh, with that late traffic. Right. I mean, like. Yeah, yeah see you guys There's in not like, like three hours. Yeah. Can just, yeah. just take to get all around yeah. the, the 405. Well, based on like where I lived. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> yeah. Listen to you. The, the 405. Listen to you. Yeah. Um, Based on where I lived at the time, Code 3 at 2 o'clock in the morning, where there's no traffic, to get to the harbor was 45 minutes. Oh, shit. And that's moving a little faster than the posted speed limit. Um, that's so, when you're like, can you turn the fucking siren off? It's been on in my ear for 45 minutes. I always turned it off on the freeway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just leave the lights on, turn the siren off. Um, yeah, so you can hear the radio and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But It'll outrun your siren, too. Yeah, you, Absolutely. It's like 65 and you can't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, it was, there were, there were some serious all hands call ups. Uh, we had one at UCLA where uh, uh, a kid failed a class or something like that. So he goes in and oh, shit. shoots his professor and then shoots himself. Well, it comes out as an active shooter. Yeah. And it was us, the FBI, the Highway Patrol. I mean, it was like everybody with a gun and a badge, like just, Des descended on UCLA and we wrecked that place, man. We, we breached so many doors. I mean, and they were like these super heavy fire doors and stuff. They were probably five or $600 a piece. And we were just smoking them with breaching shotguns and it, and come to find out, you know, fog of war type stuff. Yeah. Everybody involved was already, you know, dead. So, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. 
as as a Hollywood cop, as a LA as LAPD, like yep. the most famous police department, iconic, almost. Yeah. I mean, like movie wise, what is the most Hollywood thing that you did? Like, what is the most like? Okay, this is like straight out of a movie, crazy shit. Or you're doing stuff with the movie. Yeah, I was gonna say you've right. consulted on a number of yeah. movies. Yeah. So um, I have so many. I don't. I don't. <laughs> we're do we like have to? Hours. Do we have it's to go part, to dinner? <laughs> yeah, this is part one. Yeah. We can. So, um, let's see how how to how to preface this. Let's just say there was a very famous African American singer who passed away, and we supported the funeral. And as the hearse is driving away, he ain't in it. He's in our armored truck. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, so we, we went that way. They went this way. And the, the fear, there was like a legitimate fear that somebody was going to try to stop the hearse and oh, shit. Wow. like take him out and you know something like that. And we're like, all right. So we'll just we'll throw him in a bear cat. <laughs> we, we, we threw him in our bear, the big, huge bear. We had him and we took him where he needed to go from the venue where the funeral was. So that, that was pretty Hollywood. That is pretty Hollywood. Yeah. But, you know, we used to always support the Academy Awards every year. You know, we'd have dudes in the back, you know, nice. doing their thing and snipers up and, you know, the whole nine yards. And there's lots of Hollywood stuff. I mean, because you work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Literally Hollywood. Yeah. It? And, and there's literally been like a lot of guys that are in movies and stuff. I think there's uh, Collateral. There's like four of our guys that are in Collateral. There was another one called uh, Fantastic S- 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 Swordfish. Yeah. I don't think anybody yeah. was in that one. There was yeah. a couple of our guys that were in Swordfish. Um. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Did you make any cameos? Uh, a couple. Yeah, I was in a show called. Uh, I didn't. It's funny when I did it, I didn't know the name of the show, but I guess it was called All American. So I was in that. Uh, I've been in a couple of things. I've been in uh, a lot of the guys were in. Uh, what was the name of the show? It was a TV show that was based on LAPD. I remember you talking about this. I can't remember. The yeah. Name. I never watched it. Yeah, so. I can't remember the name of it. I, I don't watch TV, yeah. but yeah. it was one of those, you know, like, officer number two walking <laughs> in the background. <laughs> JR. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so awesome. So, like, one thing that I, th- I thought was interesting, like, we have a friend, um, Carl, that's yeah. in, the, yeah. in uh, the the movie prop business, but yeah. um, actually, that, that's another question. Uh, okay. Th- 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 like, there's, like, a certain amount of, like, movies or work that you can do before you have to be unionized and stuff. I remember you talking about that. That was interesting. I, I don't remember the number of hours, yeah. but I know hours. if you say a word, it's called SAG. It's the Screen Actors Guild. Yeah. You have to join. You have to have a SAG card, they called it, like be a member, before you can speak a word. <laughs> like you cannot say a single word unless you have a SAG card. But I think there is a certain number of hours in a calendar year or whatever. If you work, you have to join SAG, and it's like really expensive. It wasn't the Film Actors Guild, was it? I was in that one too. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I can't remember exactly what the the things are, but it's definitely. In fact, we were we were working as extras on a show, and it's it's basically a union. Mm-hmm. So we're standing there because you know it wasn't time for Officer Number Two to walk by. <laughs> And uh, this lady walks over, and she's like the SAG rep, like the union rep. And she's like, how are, how are they treating you guys? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, did you guys pay your – excuse me. Did you guys pay your dues this year? And we're like, no idea what yeah, you're talking, talking about. Yeah, talking about, lady. Yeah. You know, and they liked using us because they didn't have to give us any props. We'd show up in our uniforms <laughs> yeah. with our badge or our gun yeah. belt. And, you know, it's like, okay, off you go, you know. And they don't have to train us either. It's like yeah, they know exactly know. what to do. Yeah. You know? oh, you, just stand over here and do this. It's like we would never do that. <laughs> That's not the way this works. You know, so, yeah, it's uh, it's it's funny when you spend time around, like, Hollywood and the, it, how, like, how many things are done strictly for the shot. Mm-hmm. So remember Charlie's Angels, the full Sabrina? With the, the oh, yeah. well, they did that because if you did any sort of low ready or whatever, the gun oh, would not yeah. be in the, in the, the shot. Gun. So that yeah. was where the full Sabrina came from, was yeah. stuff like that. Got to see know. the gun. You got to yeah. see the gun. You know, see it. can't can't block their face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So transitioning from that, man. Okay. Like so, you tra- you 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 retired in twenty twenty one. Twenty so May thirty first of twenty twenty one was my last day on the books. And Tw- then you coming you up on your anniversary. Went yeah. right from that into Staccato. Uh, Mod Light first. Mod Light first. Yeah. So yeah. what do you do for Mod Light? So I am the law enforcement military specialist. Um, so 
that's also evolved into being the international guy too. So I handle all the international dealer relations and then I handle anything that has to do with any law enforcement units, individual law, law enforcement officers or, or military units. If they, uh, they need stuff, they just come directly to me and I'm, I'm literally the only customer facing employee <laughs> in the entire company. Okay. Yeah. It's, there's, it's just me. So I'm like a, I'm like a one man show out in public, for lack of a better term. So, can we pause this so he can? You, you need a key? Or are you good? No, I'm good. You got in? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, he's got his alarm band. Okay, good, good deal. You can get in the get, get in the water park. <laughs> yeah, oh, you yeah, buddy, get in the pool now, <laughs> Justin. Yeah. <You're> good. <laughs> yeah, we didn't bring our bathing suits. I did. Damn it. I brought mine. Uh, Hell yeah, we're yeah. we're gonna go. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Always next year. We're, there's no, there's no time. There's, 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 there's too much activities going on. So you transition to that, then staccato. What yes. do you do for staccato? So I am one of two uh, law enforcement business development managers for staccato. Uh, my partner and I split the country in half. So he takes uh, central and uh, eastern time zones, and I take mountain and Pacific. Um, and then we're just. Our job is to reach out to departments to get them to adopt the pistols and you know do all those kinds of things. So, which y'all are crushing it at? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's 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 a it's a whirlwind. I mean, it really is. It, it it gets so busy that sometimes you just can't keep up. You know, you're like, okay, where am I supposed to be today? You know, who, who am I talking to today? And it's it's just a very that, that company went from. You know, zero to 100 miles an hour, it seemed like almost overnight. Yeah. You know. So. How's the new one? The new. The CS. Oh, it's great. Nice. It's great. I haven't shot one yet. Oh, it's fabulous. Nice. Yeah, you should have come to the range today. Man. Yeah. We tried to get up here early, and we, yeah. we got up here as early as we could. And yeah. then it was like, you want to go to the range and barely get there and then come back? Or right. you want to just kind of. Have a drink. Have exactly. a drink. Exactly. So we <laughs> yeah. chose. Throttle down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Chose a little. Good, good choice. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's going to be. It's a long week. It'll yeah, it's busy, a long week busy, busy yeah, for this, for sure. Um, so with Staccato, mm -hmm. well, let me back to that. So you're also doing training, right? Or is that scaled back? Or that, is that That's scaled back a lot. Uh, for one, I'm 55 years old. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and you're retired. I, yeah, quote unquote, right? Um, <laughs> retired with two jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah two full-time jobs. Um, it, it, a lot of it is just basically because of where I moved. Um, to get anywhere from where I live is at least a two hour drive. Um, so it's, it's, you know, I still teach like once every like six weeks or so. Um, I've been able to scale it back to just the long range stuff, yep. uh, which is my passion. Yeah. I love it. Snipery things. Yeah, snipery things. Um, so I've kind of scaled back to, to just doing that. Um, because frankly, if, if I, I could work seven or eight days a week if, if I really put my mind to it. And like you said, I, it's time to just throttle back a little bit, you know, spend some time at home, do those kinds of things, take yeah, care you of animals, whole, a menagerie. Yeah, <laughs> take care yeah, of. yeah. There's, there's wood that needs to be cut and, you know, a lot of maintenance and stuff like that. So I've kind of scaled back a little bit. Um, I still enjoy it. Uh, there's, there's nothing better than taking someone and teaching them a new skill and watching that light bulb go off. Yeah. When okay. they finally get it, and you're like, you know. I can't wait for class in two weeks. Yeah, yeah we got Joe coming now. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Super stoked for that. Yeah. yeah, that's gonna be my first ever like long range knowledge yeah. bomb. So I'm, and, and I'm Joe's pumped. forgot more about this stuff yeah. than I'll ever know. Yeah, I like, had to stop him on the conversation one time. I was like, dude, yeah, I, I want this in person because I don't know. What you're <laughs> yeah, about. And push record yeah. so yeah. I can go back and Watch listen like listen later. Times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's super solid too, man. That guy is just something else. You know, solid dude. Looking yeah. forward to getting actually to, to meet him in person and, and hang out with him for a, a long weekend here uh, in a couple of weeks. And if I, I don't know, this is probably not going to air till way after that. Okay. Uh, because of where we're at in our, our, our release cycle. I mean, we just, we're going to release our last shot, shot show recording oh, wow. okay. tomorrow. Okay. And so like, I mean, we're still pretty deep into it. Yeah. Like, uh, so we're, we're, we're way ahead on the ball game there, but We've got him in a sold-out class yep. at the ranch. 
you know, we sold Half that of out. It's like BTO employees. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we all jumped in. We're Zero like, orders will be going out. There. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that Monday might look a little bit slow. Yeah. But I mean, like, we were really happy to get him. You know, we had talked, and you're like, reach out to him. And we're like, all right, we'll bring him in. And he's been, he sold ours out, and he's just been selling out all over the country. Yeah. So if you get a chance after you listen to this to, to check out bruiserindustries.com, I believe. I believe it is, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just, just Google it. Yeah, yeah just Google. Google it. Go yeah. to our website, check it out, and uh, and look into it because he's definitely putting on some of the best long range training yeah. that there is out there. Yeah, and a handsome man at that. <laughs> when he doesn't beard. shave. Yeah, he's got a beautiful yeah. beard though. It, 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 it grows I, out so fast. I, I was just gonna say, I think he like takes it off at night and like puts <laughs> it on the counter, and then some days he just decides to wear it, and some days he doesn't because I'll see him and it's like completely clean shaven, and like two days later it's like. It takes me a year to get to that point, bro. <laughs> so, I don't know. Last time I saw you, was it shot? Where was it? At the hunt. At the oh yeah yeah yeah. You were clean shaven. Yeah. Well, I had to. You know, my character yeah. needed you. We you and I like switched roles. Yeah. You, you didn't get a haircut, and I had to shave. Dude, I saw the picture of Mike from that. And I was slightly concerned. I was yeah. like, holy fuck, yeah. who is this guy? He's yeah. been on like yeah. a six day bender. <laughs> right. I'm, glad he, I'm glad he didn't sit on his feet like he's originally planning. <laughs> I'm doing. Uh, there, if you've seen pictures, it, I, w- I won't go into it because that's yeah. y'all's that's y'all's thing. But yeah. uh, you also, if we can talk about this, I don't know if you want to talk about it, and we can edit that out if you want. But you also had shave because of your daughter's yes graduation commission uh, commissioning. Yeah, congratulations on yeah. that. Yeah, thank you. Yep, she's uh, she's uh, she's killing it. She's she's right down the road um, right now. Um, you know, it's one of those things. She's. Uh, she's literally like the best thing in my life (laughs) you know and and you know how parents are right it's like you carry you carry this little egg around in your hand and you just hope you don't drop it you know and you do everything that you can and and sometimes you know no matter what you do you drop the egg and it cracks and you fuck there goes my egg uh and then sometimes it just it it just turns into a bird and it it turns into anything that you like I look at her and everything I've ever done just pales in comparison. Like I look at that kid and I'm just like, how in the world did you turn out as good as you are when I'm your dad? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, okay. You know? Uh, but yeah, she's a second Lieutenant in the air force and I'm not really going to get into what she does, but, yeah. uh, yeah, she's something else. You gonna see her this week when you're here? She's gonna drive up Friday. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So Fantastic. my last night here, she'll be here, and we'll go to dinner and yeah. do that kind of stuff. So oh, she's nice. about three hours away. Yeah. So it's Texas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everything's three hours, three hours away. Yeah. <laughs> three hours from Dallas. Three hours from San Antonio. Three hours from Houston. We're we're smack kind of dab in the middle. Right. Right here. So it's a good location for what we're doing here. Yeah. For the SWAT conference. Yeah. What What are you got coming up, man? What is you, is there anything that you can talk about mod light ish? Or staccato ish, or no. Just, no. <laughs> what um, about cats? Oh, I love cats. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about let's okay talk about that project. Uh, yeah, so I'm the I am the president of a, a nonprofit cat rescue. Uh, my girlfriend at the time, or still my girlfriend, um, has been rescuing animals for twenty six, twenty seven years now. Um, I've lost track of how many you know we've we've rescued and. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, we talk about SWAT stuff and being a Marine and doing all, and it's like, oh, alpha male. And it's like the more, I even hate using that term, but the more alpha you are, I think there's like that fine line between alpha and like, can I say pussy? (laughs) You know what I mean? You're like this guy that you're like the protector and all this other stuff. And that extends to, to everything. Yeah. I mean, somebody that really, truly is secure, they'll extend that to everything, you know, animals and kids and this, that, and the other thing. And uh, um, just, I don't even know how many we've got right now on the ranch. <laughs> we've we've got some in the house and some in one barn and some in another barn. and uh, Some on some acres over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's, a, there's one that's about this big that's oh, being wow. bottle fed right wow. now that, yeah. So it's, it's a... Uh, it's something else. I call them the swarm, you know? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we, we pretty much, we do everything out of my own pocket. You know, um, we get some donations. 
Um, we'll ask for some periodically, like if, if we have like a, you know, somebody needs surgery or somebody needs to be fixed or whatever, and it's just a big chunk of money, you know, um, we'll actually ask for donations. Some we get, some we don't. Um, there's some companies that we work with that'll donate food and litter and things like that. But the, the majority of it, you know, we pay for completely out of our own pocket. Uh, and it is an expensive undertaking, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you. I'll bet. It's expensive. But, you know, it's worth it. You know, it's worth it. So, But we enjoy it. So. And if people want information about that. Um, so it's uh, Meow Salvage is the name of the, the rescue. I um, love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're on uh, uh, Instagram. Um, now that we've moved, uh, we're actually thinking about changing the name from Meow Salvage to Rescue Meowton. Oh, so, <laughs> so yes, please yeah. do that. So that's kind of, that's kind of like the, uh, the unofficial title, you know, changing the name officially and all that is going to take some paperwork and stuff like that. So we're like, okay, do we really want to do this? But yeah, that's, so that's Rescue Meowton is what we're calling it now. So. <laughs> I like it. That's fantastic. Yeah. And just so you, I don't know if you guys knew, but each participant in the podcast will be getting a free kitten. So if you have a box that shows up <laughs> at your right. house with holes yeah, poked in it, don't stop that. Cause don't, that, don't, that, that. We're going to have to edit that out. Don't, don't shake it. Don't it. shake, don't it. It. Don't don't shake it. it. Grayson wants another cat. He All wants right. the name of Jingles. He's already got the name. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, El- Elsa is dead set on getting a cat. And that, yeah. that's not happening, dude. Well, yeah. Last year at Symposium, when you're like, I'm taking this cat home with me. And I was like, no, you're not. And then there's a selfie with Ike driving down <laughs> the fucking highway with a cat on the dashboard. And I was like, oh, he really took the cat home. <laughs> You called me. And you're like, did I take the fucking cat? <laughs> like, pretty sure I take the, took the cat. Is he going to take the cat to the shop? <laughs> I was like, no, because we got motion sensors, man. We can't have cats in there. Like, it'll be all, all hell breaking loose. He's yeah. like, I, I, he's taking it home, man. Yeah. It's so funny. They're, they're uh, you know, cats are funny. Like everybody loves dogs, right? You got to be a bastard not to love a dog, but you got to put some work into cats, man. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize how different their personalities are. Mm. Like they literally have a personality. Um, and the thing that I've always loved about cats is, is, you know, if they want to hang out with you, they're going to hang out with you. <laughs> if they don't, they got other shit to do. Yeah. You know, yeah, I got to go terrorize something. I got I to go tear something up. I got to yeah. go break something. Yeah. My yeah. wife's a cat. <laughs> Spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spirit animal. Yeah. yeah. Spirit animal. Yeah. Cat. Like she'll just walk in the kitchen sometimes and be like, yeah. And walk out. That's yeah. just her. Yeah, they're they're something else, man. They're hilarious. They're, uh, you know, and it's it's interesting when you have so many of them around. You can watch like each one of their different personalities. You know, it's like, oh wow, what the hell's wrong with you? You know, uh, but they're uh, they're something else. And then we've That's got cool. goats as well. Oh so wow, we've got a couple of goats. At what the kind house. of goats? Boar goats. Oh yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So we have uh, one who's I think he turns Those five Saturday. Yeah, there's something else. And then we've got another one that's younger, um, and you know, first foray into livestock. Uh, that's a learning process as well. So, but we got them for uh, fire mitigation. Just oh, basically yeah, use yeah. them as lawnmowers. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> yeah. What about mountain kitties? Yeah. Like do mountain res- lions? Yeah. Do you rescue any of them? Um, so we have them on the ranch. Uh, one of the cool things about the ranch is we have game cameras like everywhere. Nice. Um, so, they're triggered like a motion sensor, like it'll trigger an event. So anytime an animal comes near them, it'll, it'll record as long as there's movement. Um, mountain lions, bobcats, uh, skunks, spotted skunks, which I didn't know there was a thing called a spotted mm-hmm. skunk. Yeah. Uh, if you've never seen them, they're fascinating looking. Really? Yeah. It's, never- it's like a, like instead of having, you know, the traditional stripe that you're used to, they're very swirl. The white is like a swirl. Type thing. Oh wow! Yeah. I'd be like, "What is that?" And then up in the express, you figure it out real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's a Southwest thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. But uh, bears, we have bear, nice. a couple of bears running around up there. It's uh, it's awesome. Man. Yeah, it's like it's like living in like a like a game preserve almost. You know, there's elk and oh, every wow. kind of bird you can imagine, and uh, uh, it's it's really a cool like retirement. You know get out of the city, you know, be surrounded by nature and be able to watch all this stuff unfold. You know, it's literally cool. Yeah. That's hella cool. That's yeah. cool. And you deserved it for sure. I'm still pinching myself, man. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> Every time paid to come here and hang out and yeah. do cool shit and enjoy a tasty beverage. Yeah. Yeah. How many, did you eat steak tonight? Did you steak tonight? Uh, we did steak tonight. You're, yeah. You're probably going to do steak tomorrow. Did you get night. the hanging bacon? Yeah. 
Oh, of course. You don't walk in that place you without getting the hang of bacon. bacon. Yeah, I didn't get the smoked uh, old fashioned, uh, which oh, yeah, I will get. Uh, yeah, I will get one before we leave. But I didn't get one of those tonight. But you got to do the hang of bacon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, dude, we really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm flattered. And if if anybody wants more information about staccato and mod light, where can they go? Uh, Modlight.com, staccato.com, or staccato2011.com. Yeah, everything's on the website. There's, you know, the contact us blocks and those kinds of things. Um, so every everything's on there. Those websites are smarter than I'll ever be. So. And do you have a public Instagram? Uh, I do not. 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 Okay. I do not. I have uh, JR at Modlight Systems and JR at Staccato. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, like I said, 55, yeah. so they don't get a whole lot of content. Uh, no. Yeah. Dude, you every good, time you, you post gotta, something on the, like, Yeah, the you mod. always got a good thread. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah. that's the private. Yeah, that's the private the friend stuff. Yeah, 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 that's the, the private one. Y'all don't good. get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. Gotta, yeah. you gotta, you know, Jr. <laughs> but we appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you having sure. me. I really and this do. is this is definitely episode one because I know you've got a ton of. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we can. There, we'll just there chase each other around the country, and every yeah. time we we're all in one place, we'll just do this again. Oh yeah, it's it's yeah. it's really cool. And we really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you guys having me. And I'll roll this one out. So if you've enjoyed the podcast, let us know in the comments on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up, a like on Apple, iTunes, whatever they call it now. Because we know, what, 76% of you listen to it on, on Apple uh, on devices. Apple, yeah. So review it and let us know you review it. You might get a gift card. And to that listener in Hungary. Yeah. And our three downloads in Guam last month. Thank you very much for making us an international podcast hey, and prestige worldwide <laughs> wide, wide, wide. and you can find us at big com or bto gear.com or bto range dash range.com the BTO. dash is very important it is important have a good night <laughs>